Thank you for joining us everyone this morning. I really appreciate it. Uh, welcome to our JAMP Pro overview for Apple device management as part of our technical webinar series put on by the SUNY Center for Professional Development. My name is Chris Lynch and I'm a program coordinator here at the CPD. Uh, I specialize in the technical programs. I apologize ahead of time for my voice. It's uh, grass season here and my allergies are killing me right now. So um, I'll mute myself, I promise, if I have to cough or sneeze or anything like that. Uh, let's see here. So what is the technical webinar series? Uh, these were offered as part of different surveys that we sent out to the technical communities of SUNY throughout the past couple years. Uh, we've been presenting these in conjunction with different vendor partners and groups uh, within the SUNY technical community and without, outside of the SUNY technical community as well. We're looking to provide a greater understanding of concepts and strategies to address your challenges that you have, uh, highlight tools and solutions which you guys have shown interest in, uh, facilitate and support a community practice for our technical professionals within SUNY and identify opportunities for training uh, through a variety of methods and sources for different products and different solutions that you guys are interested in. We're always looking for suggestions. If you have one, please feel free to email me or call me. My contact information is down there. And we're also looking for SUNY people to actually present on different things that they've been working on or different topics or different solutions that are working within their campus so that we can have a, a meeting of the minds and share information. If you have a topic you feel would be of interest, please feel free to contact me. We'd be happy to add you to our, uh, to our lineup. So we do have some upcoming webinars. Uh, some of these have been uh, announced just recently. Um, the Apple Mac OS webinar that we're holding on the 25th, um, that's going to be focusing on Mojave and give a sneak preview of Catalina. Um, some of you may have signed up for it, some of you have may not because there wasn't a description. There is now a description for that. So if you go to the webinar series link that's at the top, uh, you can take a look at that and decide if that's something of interest to you. We're going to be doing some high-end IT security certifications in July. Um, we're going to be talking about using strategic, uh, making strategic business decisions using Excel in August. Um, the CIO Leadership Academy that is held with the S SUNY Sale Institute is going to be in August as well. Uh, we have an Internet of Things webinar that we're going to be announcing more information on happening in September. And we're going to be talking about the CAP M and the PMP certifications from PMI in September as well. And I also just put a um, webinar on scheduled it for the beginning of October. That's gonna be talking about more security solutions and certifications that you can get. We'll be focusing on some GIAC ones, some ISACA ones, um, and some Cisco ones. Uh, that's gonna be put on by our InfoSec Institute. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, that will be coming out soon. I'll send out an email with an announcement when that happens. So today's webinar speakers, we have two people from JAMF today. We have Nick DeAngelis, he's a sales engineer, and Benjamin Dennis, um, from he's a strategic account executive. They're gonna be talking about JAMF Pro, using it to manage the Apple devices on your campus. Um, and there's a little bit of company overview. I'm not gonna read it for you guys, it's nice and long, but you can check it out. We'll be sending the slides out, my slides and JAMF slides out after with the recording, so that you can take a look at it then. So, uh, Nick, Benjamin, I will stop sharing so that you can share and put your stuff in. All right. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, folks. Let me go ahead and get my screen share here ready. All right. Uh, is my keynote visible? Yep. We can see it. Thank you. Very good. So my name is Nick DeAngelis. I'm a sales engineer here at Jamf. And just a little bit about me. I come from the EDU space. Um, I was the IT Jamf administrator for uh, about 20,000 devices. I've been using Jamf for a long time since version eight. And um, my experience with Jamf is, is, is specifically in the educational space. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, to getting into this with you folks. And Ben, if you want to introduce yourself. 
Hey everyone, sorry, I was struggling with uh, the mute button. Um, hey, this is Benjamin Dennis. I am the strategic account executive here at Jamf that covers um, New York. I've been with Jamf for 11 years in August and I have spent about uh, eight of those supporting um, education from K to 20. Um, we are very thankful to have the time this morning to share with you and um, yeah, I'll uh, turn things back over to Nick and we can uh, walk through um, ways to get devices enrolled with as little touch as possible. And with that said, I'm going to begin with the six components of the Apple management lifecycle. We have the deployment component, which we're going to dive into very shortly. Uh, the configure um, part of the lifecycle, which is going to be where devices and settings, you know, security settings for devices, how, how we want devices to behave. Then apps, which is going to be tied in with your Apple School Manager account. Inventory, uh, Jamf has a super extensive inventory, which means that when a device checks into the Jamf Pro server, all of the information regarding that device from the system level down gets collected by Jamf, and that can be very, very useful. Security, uh, again, uh, with configuration profiles, compliance, perhaps patch management, and then finally, uh, self-service, which is a way to empower IT and your end users that we're gonna get into. So let's dive right in. In order to integrate Apple School Manager with Jamf Pro, what we do is we physically go into the School Manager application and we can create an MDM server here, which then will generate a token that's a secure connection between Apple School Manager and your Jamf Pro server. But what is Apple School Manager? Well, Apple School Manager is a service provided by Apple that lets you buy content, configure automatic device enrollment in your MDM, create accounts for students and staff. Apple School Manager is accessible to your technology managers, IT administrators. You can even give staff and instructors, uh, instructors access to School Manager. So it's, it's the foundation of how all of these moving parts come together. This is gonna be our poured foundation that we then build our deployment on top of. So again, Apple School Manager is gonna be where your orders that are placed are going to live. So your device serial numbers know that when they're in here, they're able to communicate back over to the Jamf Pro server you can have multiple servers pointing into one Apple School Manager instance, which means multiple campuses could theoretically have their own individual instances of Jeff Pro and or uh, volume purchase plan for app deployments, et cetera. Once that particular foundation is set up, that's when we can start talking about zero touch deployment. I'm going to move over to the Jamf console for a moment to show you folks what is tied together here. So if we move down to global management, the device enrollment program page is where that token exchange happens. So in that previous slide where we saw Apple School Manager then moving over to Jamf, that's what this looks like in your Jamf console once you have a token syncing. And you'll notice that the last actual sync for this token was about a minute ago. So we know that that connection is good. And, and the devices that are assigned, which I only have one in my instance, are ready to go. So that first step of building that foundation has been completed. Now, once the first step of the foundation has been completed and the device en enrollment program uh, is in place, essentially, what we can do is we can start thinking about how we want devices to be deployed. So we have to think now about the device configuration. Now we've set up the foundation. Now we need to say, okay, what exactly do we want these devices to do? How do they want them to behave once they become managed? So assuming that we've got our device enrollment program instance set up in Jamf Pro, if I move over to computers, that's where now we can start configuring things to happen. 
Jamf Pro has a very, very powerful tool in it called the Policy Engine, which is pretty much unique to Jamf Pro. This is going to be the first step in actually sending packages or settings to devices. Let's take a quick look at an example of what a policy looks like. I'm going to use Google Chrome as this example. Now, because we've got DEP set up and we know devices are speaking directly to Jamf from DEP, we know that we can create a policy to then hit those computers that have become enrolled. And this is an example of what an actual policy looks like in Jamf Pro. You'll notice that this policy simply consists of a package that is then hosted from our cloud distribution point, which is part of the, uh, it's part of Jamf Pro. And this device or the devices that are, that are going to get this, it's going to happen at recurring check-in. What does that mean? When a device is managed by Jamf, it actually checks in. About every 30 minutes, a call is made out to a device, the device calls back to Jamf, and Jamf says, hey, you've got a policy that needs to run on your device. And because that recurring check-in is checked there, that policy then runs on that device. If we wanted that policy to run once or ongoing or, ex or once per user, we, we have tons of flexibility there with that. And that's just one piece of this that makes the policy engine extremely powerful. But if you think about it, you'll notice all these different settings that we have in here. You can bundle things together. So if you have multiple labs that you need to deploy printers to, you could actually deploy the printers, bundle the driver, and then you could include a small shell script to tell the printer any particular uh, command. Maybe you, you, you want to uh, only allow it to print in black and white, et cetera. So you have tons of flexible options with this policy engine. And again, this is something that is very special to Jamf Pro. Now, underneath policies, a little bit different, we have what's called configuration profiles. Configuration profiles, that's just a fancy way of saying settings. How do I want this device to behave? Do I want the device to bind to Active Directory? Do I want to lock out the system uh, settings for users, et cetera? I'm gonna dive into a configuration profile just to give you folks an overview of some of the restriction possibilities that you have with configuration profiles. Again, think of configuration profiles simply as things that you're pushing to the system level, making the computer do what you want it to do. So if I were an IT administrator in charge of multiple labs, perhaps I would want to disable certain items in system preferences so that the users in the labs can't actually have access to them. And that's done so easily just by clicking checkboxes. Once I send this configuration profile out using the scope and I tell it all computers in the lab, specific computers, if I choose my selected deployment targets, I can choose individuals, groups of computers that I've created, which we're gonna go into group shortly, if we are bound uh, or, or talking to an Active Directory uh, LDAP, we can actually use user groups and, and users from AD as well. So it's very, very flexible with regard to scoping, meaning I only want this lab to get this setting. I do not want my professors to get this setting. That's where we could come in and distinguish by using scope, okay? So just to reiterate, policies and configuration profiles, having both of those together gives you the ultimate control over Mac OS, ultimate control. If you only had configuration profiles, you would essentially have to build out your own tool to do what the policy engine does. So it's a huge advantage to have a policy engine layer on top of configuration profiles. Something else that once you've got the Apple School Manager and everything talking with each other, 
and you've got a deployment going, you may or may not want certain applications to be able to run on the system. And I'll give you a perfect example. Although a system is managed, users, unless you restrict something, users would have the ability, if you don't restrict, to bring a new Mac OS installer with them on a USB drive and update a computer in the lab. Let's just say that you didn't actually have a restriction set up to prevent the users from doing this. You could simply grab the process name for the Mac OS installer, create a new restricted software record and say, you know what, when the user opens this app, I want you to delete it, Jamf. Then I want you to send me an email of the notification, excuse me, of the violation. And I also want you to kill the process, which means it will stop the process, delete the application, send an email to the IT administrator and give a wonderful message to the end user saying, this software is not approved by IT at this time. Please contact the IT department for more questions, et cetera. So it's a very nice way of setting something and not ever having to worry about it again. If you don't want users to, to run a particular application on the Mac, the restriction, the restricted software record will, it, it, it will not happen and the end user will be notified and so will the IT administrators that are actually in charge of using the Jamf console. Okay, now, configuration profiles, policies, restricted software, what about apps? Apple School Manager instance is gonna allow you to integrate any Apple apps from your token directly into your Jamf Pro server. So for example, here in Mac App Store apps, since my instance is tied to my VPP, volume, Apple Volume Purchase Plan, all of the apps on my token show up as available here for me to deploy to devices. Why is this important? Because in the true art of zero touch, you don't want your end user to have to use their personal Apple ID on the device to get applications like iMovie, Keynote Numbers, et cetera. If you provide those apps to those users, you have complete control over who gets it and you maintain the licenses. So if you have 100 licenses of iMovie and you deploy that out to 100 devices, but one device becomes lost or stolen, you can revoke the license on that machine, reclaim it and deploy it to another end user. So it's very powerful. And again, that is all because of the integration with Apple School Manager. If you did not have that integration, users would be prompted for their Apple IDs when they tried to get apps, okay? Now moving further down, patch management. So I showed you folks a policy containing Google Chrome. If you have compliance in order and you want to ensure that all devices are on a particular version of, of a particular software, such as Chrome, Firefox, Java, et cetera, Jamf has a built-in patch management system. And if I click the new button here, you will see all of the supported software titles. It's pretty vast, it's a pretty vast list. And how does this work? Well, that policy that I showed you folks earlier for Google Chrome deploys Google Chrome to all of the devices at enrollment time. So when a device comes into Jamf Pro, Jamf Pro says you need Google Chrome. But what happens when Google releases a new version of Chrome? This is where the patch management comes into place. And by creating a patch policy, we can automate the updating of these sorts of apps. So once you create your definition, you can download the latest version of the app that you want to send, upload it to your distribution point, and then this patch policy will automatically scrub your database for devices meeting the criteria, and it will update the, the apps in the patch policy on those devices without any interaction from you. As you can see, it's automatically. And it also will notify you if there is a new update that you need to, to look into. So it's a very, very nifty tool. And for security, it's a very, very handy because you have real-time notifications from the patch management engine 
letting you know that, hey, there's a new version of XYZ out there. You may want to go ahead and look at it and check it out. So it's extremely powerful. Now, assuming that we've set up some policies and we've set up some configuration profiles, we're, doing the, we're, we're creating our configuration. Now we need to decide how to collect devices. You can collect devices using smart groups with criteria. So for example, inventory on particular devices, as I mentioned earlier, is collected through the Jamf Pro. So if we look at all of the um, criteria for smart groups, let me go ahead and create a new smart group. I click the criteria button and I click add. This is a base set of criteria that you already have to work with based on devices, based on device records in the JSS, in the Jamf uh, software server. If I click show advanced, I've got a world of criteria. Why is this important to a Mac administrator? Without this, without something like this, you really are not going to have the granular management that you need. For example, one of the biggest issues that I've ever seen in the EDU space uh, is with regard to Active Directory. A device may be bound to Active Directory. The end user may leave the device in a drawer if it's a laptop for 60 days, open the lid. By that time, they've changed their password on, on another device. Since that device has been off and in a, in a, in a desk drawer, Sometimes, uh, depending on you, the rules for Active Directory, the device will automatically lose its bind. But with Jamf Pro, you could create a smart group that says, hey, I want to know the Active Directory status of these computers when they check in. And if the Active Directory status says not bound, automatically bind that computer. You don't even have to know that it, didn't, that it wasn't bound because Jamf's going to know that it's unbound and it's going to bind it for you before you even knew that it wasn't bound. So smart computer groups using the inventory uh, records criteria, extremely powerful, extremely powerful. I don't know how I would be able to live without having this much information because I can literally automate just about everything based on criteria. If this criteria is met, I want Jamf Pro to do X. And that's where this criteria in smart groups really shines. Now, for the simpler type of deployment, let's say you have 50 VIPs on your campus, and you just wanna make sure that none of the settings that get applied to the labs or any other devices get applied to those VIP devices. You could easily create a static group just by clicking checkboxes. Well, these 10 devices, we wanna go ahead and say, you know what, these devices are gonna get their own group of settings, they're going to be completely excluded from the other settings. Okay, I'm going to jump right back up to configuration profile just one more time because I want to show the exclusion and limitation feature. So on my AD bind profile, if I go to my scope, I can tell it, you know what? I want this to definitely go on X amount of computers, one second, I don't have this scope. Let me create a new one, sorry. <clears throat> For some reason I didn't show anything in scope. So if I create a new configuration profile and I want this to go on all computers, but I want to exclude the static group that I created, I simply grab that static group add it to the scope, and now Jamf Pro knows, hey, I do want you to put the, the uh, policy on all computers, technically, but just make sure you exclude these. Limitations is a little bit even cooler because limitations is, is a tool that you can use to say, hey, I only want a particular LDAP user to be able to have access to something. And then only that particular user will be in scope for that. It's a limitation for that particular user. Very powerful. Total control, complete granularity. Okay. 
Now, once we've done all of these things, once we've created our policies, once we've created our configuration profiles and we've decided on some software restrictions and whether or not we want to deploy any app store apps, et cetera, et cetera, now we're ready. Now we're ready for the actual experience to begin. And that experience is gonna begin because of the foundation that we set and this button right here, pre-stage enrollments. This pre-stage enrollment tab is where we can create what are called pre-stages, which means, hey, every device that, that is pointing to this particular pre-stage enrollment does Y, Z things. For example, I have one device in my scope that's already uh, set to the pre-stage that's, that's on the other page. If I had two devices, I would have one device available to scope here. So what do I want this device to do when it talks to Apple? The first thing I want this thing to do is configure account settings. We want everything to be automated. We want a management account automatically installed that assumes management over the, over the device. Do we want to create an additional administrator account? If we want to, by all means do it. Do we want to hide that account? Absolutely. Now, what about users? Do we want them to be able to create an account? No, we don't. Or yes, we do. Or yeah, but we'll just make them a standard account and not a standard account and not an administrator. Again, choices. Once we've made that choice, all the work that we did previously building these configuration profiles now, now we can say, okay, I built uh, four configuration profiles or six configuration profiles. I want to make sure that those configuration profiles get put on these machines as soon as they talk to Jam. So we are initially setting up everything so that when the device checks in, it just goes. Now we can decide whether or not we want to put a, associate a user with the device. That's up to you. And then a little bit more granular, we can choose buildings and departments and every device that is enrolled in this particular pre-stage enrollment will get that information embedded into it in inventory. Now, I'm gonna move all the way back down to this guy right here. Enrollment packages. Now, this doesn't mean, hey, put Microsoft Office or Adobe you know, Creative Suite um, or Adobe CC on the device. That's too big. This is really designed for a small package. And when I show you folks what it actually looks like when you turn a computer on and it goes through the, through the enrollment process, you'll see where this enrollment package comes into play. A great, a great uh, package to put in here would be something like DEP Notify or Jamf Connect. So now that we've got all the pieces in place, we've got all the pieces in place now, what can we do? Well, hold on a second, spaces is not, uh, there we go. So now what we can do is we can look to see what it actually looks like when we deploy a device. So a device comes into the institution, someone turns it on, we've all seen this screen on, on our Macs, but this is what happens. See, this is, this is where Apple School Manager comes into play. If it were a consumer device, it would ask you for your Apple ID, et cetera, et cetera, but no. Because we have that secure connection between Apple School Manager and Jamf, this device knows that it belongs to, a, to Jamf management. In this particular instance, this is a one-to-one -one device, users creating their own account, but there's an additional layer here with Jamf Connect. This is Jamf Connect. And I can send some information uh, on Jamf Connect. Jamf Connect Jamf Connect gets pretty deep, but in a nutshell, if you don't want to bind any longer, but you want all of the benefits of binding, Jamf Connect is gonna give you those things. It's also going to give you the ability to keep your passwords in sync. And many Mac users um, that are bound to Active Directory have issues with keychains when they're bound. That goes away when you use Jamf Connect. Now, once the login window has completed, now what's happening here at this window is Jamf is actually working behind the scenes. 
all of those little configuration profile boxes that I clicked off in the pre-stage are actually being applied to this device now. And that enrollment package that I mentioned, DEP notify, that's what this is. Because you would want your end users to actually know what's happening. If there's things happening in the background, let's let our end users know so that they don't close the lid or shut it down in the middle of things happening. DEP notify presents that that window to the user and lets them know, hey, we're doing some things in the background. Once the device is finished, it comes to the desktop. But there's other things that are happening in the background still if you so choose. For example, management notifications can be created on any policy. So let's move back to the Jamf Pro console just for a moment. So when we go back into policies, and I want to choose that Google Chrome policy that I, that, I, that I showed you folks in the very beginning, we have this awesome button called user interaction. So for every single policy, we could actually tell the end user, even if we're using DEP notify for the big stuff, if there are smaller packages that we want to install on users' devices, we can do that and say, excuse me, user, uh, we are updating your, your browser or we are sending the latest version of java or flash and then at the complete oh we've completed installing thank you have a nice day love it very very powerful and very useful because again letting end users know what's happening on their machines is, a, is always a good thing now let's take a closer look here so from the management notification i'm installing software and security settings this happens over the air because the device is enrolled. It doesn't have to be connected. It just has to be on a network to be able to communicate with Jamf. All of this happens over the air. VPP happens over the air as well. And again, because if you use VPP, you won't have to use users' IDs. User Apple IDs, some institutions encourage that, and that's, a, that's an institutional um, decision. But you do have the capability of not having any personal identifiable information put in on that machine with regard to Apple by using the VPP apps. Now, the MDM commands are what are doing our security settings here. So even though I pushed all those configuration profiles out through the pre-stage, there may be other configuration profiles that I want to hit this device that were not in the pre-stage, those, those profiles come in right after enrollment. Now self-service. Self-service is gonna be installed on every single device that's managed by Jamf. What is the benefit of self-service? If you have a standard configuration and you're pushing that out, all that happens automatically with the zero touch deployment. But if you have a situation where a lab needs a printer or one specific user needs a specific piece of software, you can actually provide that software or setting via self-service to the end user. So if you have a professor or multiple professors that are out of town, they need access to a particular application, IT administrator in front of Jamf console can make that available to the end user. The end user can download that in their own time. So self-service is extremely powerful. Another great reason to use self-service is empowering IT. Notice that there's a help tools option here. Now that's not by default, that's a category that, that, that was made. You can make a category called help tools, help desk, IT help, et cetera. And if you have end users that are not admins on their machines, you can provide things in self-service that run as local administrators. That way they don't have to come to IT or IT doesn't have to go to them. They can click a button and whatever IT was going to do to that Mac in the terminal or wherever uh, they were, and most times it is through a terminal command to address something, that terminal command can be run by the user of the device directly from the self-service portal. Okay, now, <clears throat> let me go back to the Jamf console one more time. So with all these pieces together, 
with our device enrollment program, syncing, and you can see mine synced about a minute ago, with our device enrollment program syncing, with our pre-stage enrollment from the device enrollment program, telling the device how to behave when it enrolls, what uh, settings it needs, to deploying apps or policies, It all will happen automatically through Jamf Pro. Now, are there any questions so far? I wanted to make sure I address any questions. I can't see the chat, but are there any questions in the chat so far on what I've, what I've covered? I don't see any currently, Nick. Okay. Now, I want to uh, dive just for a, a few more minutes into some other things that make Jamf so special with the Apple ecosystem. I'm gonna go into settings. And as an IT administrator and an Apple administrator, you know, using this tool, and I've also used others as well, this little character right here is a game changer. Because you can literally write a full shell script directly in your Jamf Pro. I'll show you one that I use frequently for naming computers. And this is gonna get us a little bit into the Jamf API. Might be a little bit advanced, but just, just, just to show you. So this is a shell script that was written directly in Jamf Pro. And this shell script will name my computers for me based on information in Jamf Pro. Now this is a pretty heavy one but you can do the ones that are even, that are super simple as well. The whole point is you have the ability to, to script directly in the product. So you don't have to use external sources to get these types of things done. Here's another one that I, that's, that's probably my favorite. So this is a script here that basically turns your Mac into sort of how an iPad is when you restore an iPad. If you restore an iPad, it, you know, it wipes the device, it reinstalls the OS. That can actually be done with Mac OS, and this script is an example of how that, of how that can be done. I know, I know we're not reading through the whole script. I'm just, just showing you some of the capabilities of what you can do, how powerful it is. You don't have to be uh, an Apple wizard to, to do a lot of these things. In many cases, you may not ever use the scripting engine, but the point is, it's there. You have that flexibility, you have that power under the hood for complete Apple device management. And with that, I pass the torch. Thank you, Nick. I'm still on the, the mute button struggle bus. Um, so, I'm a little unsure if um, everyone who is on the call today is a current user or maybe someone who's considering using Jamf Pro. So I'll try to um, talk a little bit about um, what happens if you decide you want to partner with us or if you are partnered with us, how you can kind of grow your skill set. So um, here at Jamf, we really have all of us, every single employee, regardless of you know which department we work in, we have one directive and that's to help our customers succeed with the Apple platform. Um, and I bring that up because I think if you kind of focus on that piece, you'll see that all the things that we do have that single core goal in mind. So that being said, you're like, hey, I like Jamf Pro, I wanna use it. We're not just gonna hand it over to you and say good luck. Um, we have implementation services that we require that are called jump starts. Um, we have various different versions of jump starts because we know that not everyone's kind of walking into this with the same skill level or with the same setup. Um, and honestly, some of those options are predicated on where you choose to have the Jamf server live, whether it's in Jamf Cloud or whether you uh, decide to host it locally. Um, but our Jamf Pro services are implementation services. Some of them are on site, some of them are remote. Um, and they are basically time spent with a Jamf expert to make sure that your Jamf Pro instance is set up correctly. And then they spend time with you um, making suggestions on workflows and making you aware of um, all of the ways that we try to continue to help you after we walk out the door post jumpstart. 
Um, so which that sort of, I think I'll start with support. So um, as a Jamf customer, a Jamf Pro customer, you have access to um, Jamf support, unlimited Jamf support, Monday through Friday during business hours. Um, and you have phone, chat, and email support. Um, we used to previously refer to the customer success managers as Jamf buddies because we do assign um, a customer success manager to your account and they're sort of uh, like your concierge and support, if you will. And um, they're backed by a technical help desk. So um, if something's maybe beyond their technical level, they have an immediate team that they can turn to uh, and bring them in to help you out with any questions that you have. And um, one of our, uh, I think another thing that sort of sets us apart is that, you know, because we do try to help folks succeed with Apple, you know, we'll field questions um, and try to help where we can on things that are not always necessarily Jamf specific. So, I mean, if you have other um, tools in your environment that you're using to support your Apple deployment, you know, we'll do our absolute best to provide um, guidance and support where we can. Um, so once you have your jump start, you have this support system, support um, to back you. Um, so if you have questions, you can you know, create cases, like I said, via email, phone, um, chat. We're, 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 we're here for you. It's not like here's the software, bye. You know, we're here to, help, to stay and to help. Um, so, you know, kind of based on some of those skills that you gained during the jumpstart and from, you know, actually deploying the devices and trying to, um, you know, get your deployment matured, um, we do offer ongoing uh, training options to you. Uh, we have various courses. I'll start with our first one because it's free. I know everybody likes that. Um, and I encourage anyone who is new to the Apple platform or Jamf to check that out after the webinar today. It's our Jamf 100 course. Uh, it's uh, basically a, an introduction to the Apple platform and the foundationals of using mobile device management and our product specifically Jamf. Uh, there is an optional certification that you can take. It's an online course. If you decide to do so, it's completely optional. Um, and from there, we have Jamf 200, 300, and 400 courses. And each one sort of builds on the previous course where you work your way all the way up to uh, being a Jamf certified expert. Um, so those are our individual courses that you would take uh, the 200, the 300, and the 400. You would take those. We offer those in various cities throughout the world. Um, and you would take those on an individual basis. We do also have an option we refer to as a training pass. And that comes in two flavors. Um, one is a training pass that's assigned to an individual, and then we have another that's an organizational training pass. And I liken that to like a hall pass that you can pass around, the organizational one that is, to various folks to take a class. You just can't have one person, uh, you can't have two people in a class at a single time. So I, I, I liken it to an actual physical hall pass that can you know, only be in one person's possession at a time. Um, and outside of like our ongoing um, certifications, we do have a, a services department. So if you ever have, you know, whether you just need someone who's done this type of work before, or if you actually need, you know, someone to come out and, you know, be an embedded employee, so to speak, um, everything we do is really designed to um, help you to continue to grow, to feel supported, and um, get you any of the help that you might need. Um, so I'm looking at chat here. Let's see here. Uh, So how would Jamf help us in pushing, installing non-Apple store apps like Office, Photoshop, et cetera? Would we do something similar like ARD and push a PKG from the Jamf Pro console? All right, I can take that. So yeah, so uh, let me go back into the console really quickly. <clears throat> so in the policy engine that I was speaking of in the very beginning, that's where we push out our packages. So that example of Google Chrome that I gave, this is exactly how you're gonna push out your packages, directly through the Jamf Pro server. So let's go through what it looks like in real time to create a package for deployment. So if I create a new policy, and I'll call it Chrome, and the package is already uploaded to my distribution point, so I grab the package that I want. 
then I can make that package available in a category. I'm gonna choose my cloud distro for this. And I'll say, this is a web browser. So this is gonna go in the browsers category. Now, how do I want this to install? Well, I want it to install on recurring check-in. As soon as the computer checks in, I want this to install. Well, which computers do I want this to go on? I want Google Chrome on all of my computers for all users. Everybody gets it. Or, well, I'm only gonna put it on this particular smart group, et cetera. Once I click save, that policy is ready. When that computer checks in, the software installs. So that's AutoCAD, Adobe, anything that's a package, anything that's a, that's a, that's a PKG uh, or disk image as well. DMGs you can deploy directly by creating policies. Any other questions, Ben, similar or, or on that particular topic? Uh, I see they just were, someone was trying to be certain that Adobe um, CC Suite and Office can be installed from the platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. I installed Adobe CC to uh, about 4,500 Macs in the high school labs. I started the policy on a Friday night and it was done Saturday early morning, installing Adobe CC 2018 on the entire lab, all automated. So, someone said, wow, that is impressive. <laughs> um, and then someone wanted to know where the packages are hosted in Jamp Cloud or on premise Boy, I was waiting for that question, Ben. <laughs> All right. So if we go into settings and we scroll down, I think I might have scrolled too far. There we go. Our server infrastructure, you get a cloud distribution point with Jamf. I had a, probably about a terabyte plus in my last one. I don't have that much here. Uh, but in my last one, I had a, at least a terabyte in there. And by default, you'll get this. But the best part is, remember, flexibility is the, is, the, is the name of the game with Jamf. If you wanted to have local file shares, SMBs, no problem. No problem at all. And we can even make that our master distribution point. Or we could have multiples and have a failover. So many options. So many options. Very easy to set up. That's the name of the game, having those options. Any other questions? Is there a cost for using Jamf distribution point? Do you pay by the gig? You uh, don't, no, I'm sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, no, for Jamf Cloud, uh, you have, it's, I believe it's, since it's, uh, the backbone's Amazon, it's unlimited and it's, it's included in your Jamf Pro subscription. And I see someone here was asking about price, so I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so for education, and if you happen to go to our website and, and look at pricing, I feel like there's a little bit of confusion there. Um, be, be careful and notice that a lot of those prices are a per month basis and they are commercial prices. So when you, can, when you calculate that up, it ends up being different than what I'm sharing here, here today. And um, education customers receive a, a, a deep discount. So we sell it uh, on an annual basis and it's a subscription. So regardless of where your Jamf Pro server lives, um, it's the same price. And we basically have two tiers in education. That's um, under 10,000 devices and over 10,000 devices. So for anyone under 10,000, uh, you're looking at $18 per Mac OS computer each year. And for your iOS or tvOS devices, you're looking at $9 per device each year. Um, in terms of the jump starts, that I was talking about earlier, um, where the Jamf Pro server lives plays a large role in dictating which Jumpstart option we'll have to go with. You have more options, honestly, if you go with Jamf Cloud, uh, because you can then choose between our remote implementation services or our on-site ones. But um, I'd say the, the base requirement for, um, on, for on-prem is an on-site visit. Um, and you can start with the Mac OS platform and add OS later um, or vice versa, or you can decide to go all in and start with both. Um, but each platform requires a jump start, so to speak. So if you were to start with uh, Mac OS, there's an on-site jump start. It's two days if it's on-prem and that's $6,000. Um, 
if you were to do iOS on-prem, it's basically two, we call it a four plus four remote. So it's basically an eight hour remote jumpstart for $1,500. Um, if you decide to do both simultaneously on site, um, it's $7,500. And if you then opt for Jamp Cloud, you can either choose from any of those on-site services, but you have additional remote options available to you um, since the setups in Jamp Cloud. It removes some of the um, potential stickiness of setting servers up locally. But um, we have a remote Mac OS jumpstart option for Jamp Cloud customers. That's $3,500. Um, and then we have a remote iOS jumpstart for Jamp Cloud customers, and that's $750. Uh, yes, uh, I do believe Chris is going to share out a link to the recording today that you can share as and we'll be sending over a PDF of our um, slides that we share today. And I know we've thrown a lot of information at you today. Uh, you absolutely are welcome to reach out. I'm happy to field any questions. I know Nick can hop on for any technical related questions as well. We are happy to have, you know, talk about anything that we've shared today with you. And if I may add, you know, Jamf is a fantastic product, but what makes it even more fantastic is the community. Um, I don't know if you folks have ever uh, gone to Jamf Nation. Uh, you don't need to, to be a Jamf customer to have access to Jamf Nation, but even before I was an admin, a Jamf admin, uh, I used Jamf Nation because the people there are so eager to help and share information. You could find just about anything from the most obscure, uh, you know, deployment uh, workflows for particular custom apps to basic how to's and the community is amazing. Not to mention all the documentation that we have on Jamf Nation, but the community in general is what makes Jamf Nation so special. So if, if, if you're interested in that, I highly recommend that uh, any of you folks Go to Jamf Nation today, create a free account, and just look around and see, see what the discussions look like. Thank you, Nick. Um, I see there's a question here about the jumpstart prices. Yes, those are one-time prices when you onboard with us uh, since they're implementation services. The annual uh, recurring cost is in your subscription cost, your per seat cost. Um, it's their pricing for State University of New York. Um, at this time, there's not pricing specifically for uh, SUNY customers. Uh, most of the folks that have onboarded have, uh, from my recollection, received several quotes from Apple and other reseller partners that we work with as well as I think I've quoted Jamf Direct. Um, if you guys can help me uh, collectively get the SUNY system to maybe over 10,000 seats, that's something that maybe we could as a, a group explore together. Um, maybe try to figure out if there's a way we can um, work towards org volume pricing or whatnot. Uh, Nick, we have another question. Can this completely replace my case device for my Macs? I use the K1000 for inventory as well. So I would say yes, and I will, let me go back into the console. Let's take a look at the extensive amount of inventory that you get from a device that's enrolled into Jamf Pro. So this device, this is one of my devices. And if we go into the inventory tab, just on general alone, we're pulling the computer name, the last inventory update. When was the last time this computer checked in? What was its IP address, internal, external? version of Jamf binary, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's just on the general tab. If we wanna get really detailed on the hardware, it gives us that extensive information in inventory, the operating system down to the build. Who is using this computer? Who is it assigned to? Are, are there any security um, settings on? Purchasing information, which if you tie in your global service exchange account with Apple, if you have a GSX global service exchange, you can tie that directly into your Jamf Pro server and it will tie directly into Apple Care, and you'll be able to create smart groups of devices that are becoming obsolete 
or whether or not their Apple Care ID is expiring. You've got storage information, extension attributes, which are custom attributes that you can write to pull inventory on. So you're not just limited to the inventory that's collected naturally. You can create your own extension attributes for inventory as well. We can inventory disk encryption status, applications that are on the device, what profiles are on the device, what certificates are on the device, how many package receipts are here, and how many of those were from Jamf Pro what local user accounts live on this device, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, all of that inventory information is then used to create your smart groups based on all of that criteria that we just saw. Does that answer the question? Um, I believe so. Um, comment was excellent. If we get this, I can free up licenses to use for other Windows devices. I was trying, to, Nick, thanks for bringing up Jamf Nation um, a while ago. I was thinking, I was trying to think if there's anything else I might have accidentally overlooked that would be helpful to share today. Um, are there any other questions that are coming to mind about like uh, the jump starts or, you know, support or anything that we've covered today? Well, if questions pop up following the webinar, um, absolutely reach out. You know, we're happy to set up a time to, to, to speak with your teams individually and, and cover anything that we need to. And there's a wealth of information on our website about all different types of things. Um, you know, you can find some documentation on some of the things that I shared today. Um, and if I walk away with one thing I'd like to share, I, I'd say, by all means, do check out that Jamf 100 course. It's free, you have nothing to lose. I think it's pretty awesome and, uh, and, and pretty helpful too. Yeah, so I have a slide up right now, guys, that has the Jamf training opportunities. The links on these will take you to the Jamf page so you can check them out. The Jamf 100 one is there, like they indicated, it's free. Uh, for the Jamf 200 class, we've had some campuses uh, indicate they have some interest in coming to a class like that, and we're looking into the possibility of holding a private class for the SUNY IT professionals using Jamf or looking to use Jamf. Uh, if you are interested, please email me or drop me a phone call. My contact information is at the bottom. You can also contact me via workplace chat if you're a workplace campus. Um, I'd be happy to add you to my list. Uh, we've got some quotes out there for prices, and we're looking into some different possibilities um, of where to have it, depending on what campuses show interest. We might have it here in East Syracuse at our CPD campus, but then again, we've got some campuses that are out in the west area of New York. So we've also looked at having something around one of the campuses in um, the Buffalo, Greater Buffalo area, Greater Rochester area. Okay. Um, these slides, I will send them out at the end uh, so that you can take a look at them and the links will be active so that you can click on them. Any last minute questions? Okay, well, thank you all for your time. I appreciate that you coming to join us. Uh, if you haven't checked out the webinar series uh, lately, definitely take a look. We've been adding a lot of different webinars. We're up to 11 now uh, with our 12th coming soon. So, and if you have a suggestion for something you'd like to hear, um, please let us know. I'd be happy to contact a vendor or another group and have that placed on our webinar series. I'll be sending out the link and the slides at the end. Uh, it'll either come out tomorrow or Monday morning, depending on how long it takes to process. Um, it'll be up in our YouTube and it'll be public. Feel free to send the email that you receive as a follow-up out to any of your um, Anybody you work with that might want to view this that didn't get a chance or anybody you think might be interested that didn't know about our webinar series. Uh, we still have tons that you can view and we have a bunch uh, the three that we've already had in our YouTube so that they can still be viewed. We did one on System Center Configuration Manager for Microsoft and um, we did one on ITIL 4. Uh, the new uh, configuration coming out. So if you have any questions, also post this webinar. Feel free to email me. If you have anything you need from Ben or Nick, uh, let me know and I can send you their email addresses. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day.
Thank you for your time, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a nice day. You too. All right. Bye, everyone.